just so everyone knows, I've officially put myself up for adoption. Um, this is zone three for you guys. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And so if you like the sounds that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and join our awesome crew. And, and in today's video, this is part two of the videos about rocks in the bottom of pots. Whether you do it, whether you don't do it, what to do if you have done it, all the other stuff in between. And the sole purpose of these two videos is mostly to dispel not the misinformation that people purposely put out there. I don't think it's purposely at all. I think that there's just a slight misconception when it comes to rocks in the bottoms of pots. And when we look at how I designed my um, planner, my garden planner, which if you can afford it, please let me know. I will send you the link for free. If you can afford it, please do purchase it either in physical copy or digital form because it is going to a good cause. I am looking for an organization to donate to that is helping spread the knowledge of gardening to generations young and old and releasing the barriers to doing so because I don't like the commercial side of gardening. I think this is a knowledge and um, a hobby that everyone should have access to. And so I want to make that possible as much as possible. And so the purpose of the rocks video is to let you guys know that it is possible and you can still do it. While there are major influencers out there that will tell you you can't and it's a horrible idea, because it's going to kill your plants. I'm here to give you the methods and the theory behind why you can do it and just some things you need to watch out for if you choose to do so. Rocks, gravel, sand, whatever the case is, is cheaper than potting soil. And I know where people are coming from when they decide to put rocks in the bottom of a pot to save some cash because potting soil is expensive and I understand that from me to you <laughs> I get that because that was a huge barrier to entry for me when it came to gardening or house plants you can only get so many you can only do so many containers for a container garden if you have the appropriate amount of soil but there is solutions to this so I'm here to give you those solutions today but besides all that before we jump into how to put rocks and soil in a pot together responsibly on the note of sustainability and making gardening accessible to people around the world i have here today a phenomenal canadian company that ships to both canada and the us called magi dome and you can go find their instagram and his motto when it comes to the magi dome is to provide shelter for homeless people all the way to providing people greenhouse solutions for less. So the purpose of this is to do it for less money. Now, obviously in this video, I'm not gonna be sending this baby up, but when I do set it up, I'll be sure to film it for you. But I did wanna unbox it with you guys because I'm excited to see what's inside. And I thought since I'm talking about making gardening cheaper, that this would be a good video to unbox this on. So I wanna thank Magi Dome so much for sending me this. If anyone knows how I select sponsors or um, anyone like that, I usually select them based on their factors like environmentally friendly, trying to do better good for people, um, Canadian company, small businesses that's kind of my jam and so magi dome fit the bill across the board you're canadian you're wanting to help homeless people you're making things affordable for people and that is just it's just a wonderful thing to me so okay so inside we have i'll leave these guys' instagram down below but we have a beautiful photo postcard type photo of the actual system itself and then on the back we have this 
uh, basically display of what the system looks like. There's three different sizes. And when I was speaking to um, the owner of this company, he's out in BC and he said what you can do if you want extra support, if you have it in a high wind area or say you wanted to actually hang something or put like shelving units on the actual dome itself, um, you can put cross members in here. So you put one from here to here and that just adds support. So you can make this as um, intense or less as less intense as you want it or what you'd like to see. So that is really interesting uh, part about the Magi Dome. Now, uh, so I love these postcards. I'm probably gonna just put them on the fridge for the sole purpose how pretty they look. So it says on here, you're going to need the Magi Dome connectors. Um, you're going to need 25 equal length, one inch by two inch, or the wood pieces, that's these. They kind of look like the fence posts. They're very inexpensive, by the way, because um, I've already picked mine up that I need to make this happen. And then you're going to need screws, approximately one inch to three quarter washer head style. You make this based on how, how long your timbers are. So the larger or the longer your timbers are, the bigger your Magi Dome is. So that's kind of the cool part. If you're not sure what kind of space you have or if you are living in one place and you're going to move eventually and you're going to want a bigger greenhouse eventually but you don't want to spend a ton of cash, then this is the solution for you because the connectors are the base of it and then you can customize this to whatever size you need. So I'm gonna do a video on its own of how exactly this is set up. But this is what the connectors look like. So this is them in all their glory and just to give you an idea of how they go together. So this is would be facing the inside of the tent and this would be what's on the outside. And then what you decide to put on the out exterior of the tent is completely up to you. So you can use um, just like clear plastic, like the poly plastic or I'll insert some photos from their Instagram on here because he does really cool videos of his Instagram. You can kind of make it into like a boho tent almost where you can actually put cloth on the outside or um, whatever the case is. So can be a little hot. So this is what the connectors and all that stuff looks like. I am so excited to actually try this out. I was in the market for a greenhouse anyways and this is honestly the perfect solution for that. So super stoked to try it but i thought since we're talking about bearish entry and making gardening more affordable for people that magi dome unboxing was a good fit now let's talk about rocks in pots if you missed the theory from the first video please be sure to check that out i'm not going to go over again a lot of that stuff because i don't want to repeat myself too too much and bore you guys entirely but there's a common misconception that you should not put rocks in the bottom of your pot due to the perched water table. And I'm here today to give you solutions for putting rocks in the bottom of your pot when using less soil and how to do this properly. I touched briefly on this in my last video, but I just wanna give a very quick video on exactly how to make this happen. As we know, we have a pot and we've discussed what a perched water table is. A perched water table means essentially that you're always going to have water regardless of the height of the pot. So we drew a graph here, but just to put this into us plant people terms, regardless of how tall your pot is, so if your pot is this tall, if your pot is this tall, if your pot is this tall, you are always going to have water for the same height regardless of how tall your pot is. Your water height is always gonna be the same. If you're confused as to what I mean by this, then like I said, check out that first video. So we've determined regardless of the height of the pot, we're always going to have this inherent perched water table. I think the easiest way to do this is to draw this out and draw all the possible scenarios out for you and how you would do each one depending on the pot that you have. So 
we have our lovely drawing board. As you guys know from the last video, I am not a teacher. I'm not a professional drawer, so laugh if you will. I'm totally cool with it. So we have our pot. Let's do three different scenarios. Our first scenario is going to be a plant that is small. So we have a little beeple plant, but we have a big, beautiful, let's just draw some roots on this baby. That's my roots, you like my roots? My roots are good. Okay, so we have a plant and in this plant we have the top of the soil system, which is this, and then we have it in a pot that is approximately this size. So this is the nursery pot we got it in. But we have a big, beautiful pot. It's just gorgeous, it's a decorative pot. It's, it's it's just stunning. But we know if we put this tiny little plant into this giant pot and we fill this entire pot with soil, we will have an underutilization of the water in that soil system, meaning we will end up with root rot and eventual decay of our roots. What is our solution? Well, the typical solution that people would say is we add in rocks and we take the plant out of its nursery pot and we fill the rest of this up with soil nursery pot gone fill the rest of this up with soil and what the internet is telling us now is that we can't do that because what we end up with is something called a perched water table and we went over what a perched water table is but depending on the soil uh porosity and structure above our system is always going to have a perch water table and we can determine our perch water table to be the same all the time as long as we're using the same potting soil. So that is our perch water table and it sits above our rock system, which is down here. The worry is that this plant is eventually going to end up with root rot because its roots are going to hit its perch water table and it's going to be end game for the plant. What is our solution? Because we went over negative pressures and the entire system of the soil and how that whole idea or that whole concept works, remember our beautiful chart we had where we had uh, zero pressure here, high pressure here, we had saturation here, and we had zero sat here, and this is what our graph looked like. So what we're gonna do to make this happen is we're going to take a string, a piece of cotton, sponge whatever the case is and we're just going to increase the height we're going to increase the entire height of the system so if we put a sponge into our rocks if we put a piece of cotton into our rocks we're going to inherently increase the entire system itself the height of the system and therefore we're going to affect the pr that ring light is going to drive me nuts um, we're going to essentially affect the total height of the system and therefore the perched water table, meaning our perched water table goes from here to down here. Ta-da! So we have a small plant that can't utilize all the soil in a big, beautiful urn pot. So what do we do? We still put it, fill it up with rocks. We still put our soil on top, the amount that we need to make sure that this plant survives. And then we're just gonna take a sponge and we're gonna put the sponge in the pot, which is going to increase the height of the system and therefore drop our pressure down. Easy peasy. So what's our next example? Well, number two example is going to be a shallow pot. So this is very common with things like succulents or cacti, bonsai, things like that. We have a very shallow dish here. And like I said, regardless of the type of soil you have, you're always going to have a perched water table. But say our perched water table goes all the way up to here, meaning our roots most definitely are sitting in this area. What are we gonna do? We can put a sponge in here. We can put a piece of string in there. We can put a piece of cloth in there. Anything that's going to increase the height of the system. Once we increase the height of the system, like we showed in that last video, we're going to end up with a bunch of water coming out the bottom.
That is our second scenario. Our third scenario is using rocks in the actual soil system. And so while this is the common, I'd say this is probably the number one way that people use rocks, and this is the way I use rocks in my pots, never had an issue. What we end up with here in number three is a pot, but we're actually using the rocks in the system. So say this is our soil, and we have these rocks in the actual system. And I do this with my succulents. If you watch my succulent soil video, I showed this in there. So I have rocks in my system. What these rocks are gonna do when they're in the overall system itself is it's going to lower my perched water table. Why? Because the system texture is a lot more porous. I have less capillary action solely due to and because of the overall system being more porous. So this is also an option. What I'm trying to tell you is that rocks will cause a perched water table, but rocks are incredibly valuable when we're trying to save money in gardening or plant care, indoor plant care, and it's also really valuable if we have a small plant and a big pot and we want to use the big pot but we don't want to kill the plant because of root rot. If I fill this entire container with soil, I'd end up with root rot. I'd end up killing that small plant. How do we counteract it? We reduce the volume of soil. We still put our rocks in the bottom, but we just give it a drainage system, a way to get the water out of the system entirely. And the way we do that is by increasing the height of the system and therefore altering the pressure up here and increasing the, the, the negative pressure at the top of the system. So the taller the system, the more gravitational pull we have up here and it overrides the capillary action which is down here. The moral of the story is that rocks can be used in pots and I don't want you, if it's working for you, to stop doing it, especially if it's what's continuing you in your plant journey and it's something that makes it less expensive for you please utilize that system. So don't let it be a barrier entry. Don't let it stop you. If it's working for you, then please utilize it. If you like the big pots, utilize the big pots. If you like the shallow pots, utilize the shallow pots. Just simply put that sponge out the bottom. If you wanna add gravel to the soil to increase the porosity and actually uh, decrease the height, of your perched water table, then do that as well. One thing to note is the larger the porosity in the soil, so say these, this is bark soil, an orchid soil, for example, the lower this perched water table is gonna be, and it just keeps going down, the more porous your soil becomes. A peat moss soil is going to have a higher uh, perched water table than something like an orchid bark. What you can do at home is you can take a glass and you can take your uh, homemade, and actually send me photos of this. I'd actually be interested to see where you guys are at. But you can take a, a cup, a plastic cup, drill some holes in the bottom of the cup, and then put your homemade potting soil inside. You guys can send me photos of this on, on Instagram if you like. And what you can do is you can test to see where your perch water table is. So what you will do for your test to see where your perch water table sits is you will water your plant and thoroughly, totally saturate the whole system. Have it so that it starts running out the bottom. Then let it sit for, you know, five minutes. And then take a photo of where your soil looks like it's wet and where you begin to see air pockets. Where it is wet after five minutes is your perched water table for your soil. So this is always going to be that height regardless of how tall your container is. This will always be your perched water table until you add things like bark or I can't even write it because it'll be backwards. 
things like bark or rock to your system to actually decrease the height of that water table. If you know the height of your perch water table based on the potting soil that you're using, what you can do is you can utilize the sponge method and see if you can draw some water out. So same cup, same soil, insert a sponge in the bottom. See if adding that little bit of height, if the sponge is the correct texture to drive that perched water table down. Otherwise, what you can do is you can just note that height, write it down on a piece of paper, and then make sure you take that into consideration when you're doing a shallow dish or if you're adding rocks to the bottom. If you know where your perched water table sits, you always know how high you have to make your pot based on where your root system is and where you have to start adding rocks. Now, perch water table this, perch water table that, rocks in the bottom of your pot, etc., and so forth. One thing I will tell you, regardless if you choose to add rocks or not, the height of the pot you choose to use, all that fun stuff, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to your water utilization. And if the volume of soil in the pot is less than or equal to the volume of water that is needed by the plant to survive, you will not have root rot regardless if you have rot rocks or not, regardless of where your perch water table is or isn't. And a very prime example of this can be found in all of our homes. And I have one right here. It's roots hanging out the bottom of your pot. So as you can imagine, this perch water table is literally above the root system in this pot. The perch water table actually probably sits somewhere around here and my roots are way down here, meaning it doesn't really matter so long as your pot is the proper size and utilizes the amount of water you give it. If you notice that you are underutilizing the amount of water in your system or that you are running into root rot or you're getting moldy soil on top, what you need to do is you need to decrease the size of your pot, you need to decrease the volume of water you have or volume of soil, soil you have, whether that means adding rocks in the bottom or transplanting into a smaller pot, I don't care. That's what you need to do. And then you can utilize some tips that I've taught you, which is taking a fork and actually uh, teasing the top of the soil or what I've taught you uh, previously in the last video is if you have a system that's waterlogged, all you have to do is just make that soil just the tiniest bit taller by uh, doing literally tipping it this way, um, making the negative pressure at the top of the soil higher and therefore releasing water, which is what I have happening right here, right now. That is the system you need to do. In summary, rocks in the bottom of your pot does not matter so long as the volume of soil and water in the system is less than or equal to the ut plant's utilization of that water. Meaning if the plant is able to utilize all that water within a week's time, then you're good regardless if you have rocks or not. If rocks are the way or gravel is the way that you are able to afford to garden, whether that be container gardening or house planting, and it is something that you need in your life, do not steer away from using the rocks. Simply place the rocks in, Take note of what your perch water table is based on the potting soil you're using by using that clear cup method we talked about and throw the rocks in the bottom of the pot and just take mental note of where your perch water table is. Or if you have a pot that is smaller and you want to drive the water out of the system, then take a sponge, a t-shirt, a towel, whatever it is, and just place it inside the pot so that when you lift the pot out, you are actually elongating the total height of the soil system and therefore driving that perch water table farther down into the system, which would then be the towel or the sponge, which then you can simply wring out of the system and get rid of entirely. 
If you don't have a towel on the bottom, if you have rocks in the bottom of your dish, and you're noticing that you have way too much soil water based on the usage that your plant has, then simply do that trick that I taught of just tipping that pot, making that pot just the slightest bit taller, which will again drive that perch water table out of the system and therefore help you alleviate the potential of root rot. I hope this video was helpful. I hope the two sets of videos weren't too confusing. I didn't know how to do this in a sense where I'd be able to explain it to you without the potential of someone telling me off or someone saying that I'm wrong or that I'm an idiot or whatever. I know I'm going to get those comments regardless because um, people are really passionate about the rocks and the bottoms of pots thing um, and not utilizing them. But I wanted to put as much science into it and kind of explain my stance on it and why I think the big firm no stamp is a little bit too harsh and a little bit too heavy handed when there are solutions to still utilizing that system in the system as a whole. What I think is important to note, regardless of what the system is, if it's rocks or if it's actually the bottom of a pot, or if it's even just a change in the texture of the soil. Say you have sand and then you have potting soil. If you have a change in the texture of your soil, you will end up with a perched water table, hands down, regardless of what happens. Every time your soil layer changes in density and in structure, your, your water table will perch because it's not able to move throughout the system. It's treating that as a separate system. So that is something to know when you're gardening, for example, if you have a raised bed and you have it on top of cement, I have that in my yard. If you have a raised bed that's on top of cement, you need to take that perch water table and the height of your perch water table based on the soil system that you have and where that's going to hit you then have to actually adjust the height of your raised bed. Same thing goes with raised bed on top of a soil. If the soil below the system does not match the soil above the system, you will end up with a perched water table. Hugaculture or culture, whatever, the one with the trees, and you put the soil on top, you will end up with a perch water table, especially if you're using smaller sticks and twigs to do that system. You will end up with a perch water table, something to take into consideration. So regardless of if it's rocks, I know we're harping on rocks here, but if you are changing the texture in any system whatsoever, then you're gonna end up with the same scenario. If you have any questions, you're confused, or if I've completely beat you into oblivion when it comes to science, please let me know in the comments below. I try to steer away from these really heavy soil science videos because I want to make stuff that's digestible for you guys. And so I was really hesitant on doing these videos. I actually deleted quite a few of them in the past <laughs> uh, because I kept on seeing these don't use rocks, don't use rocks videos coming out. And I thought, I. Eh. <laughs> it's like it's a it's a tool that people need to utilize if we're not millionaires simple fact um i wish we could all be millionaires but we're not so don't steer away from it utilize it it is actually a tool that's useful especially if you have a larger size pot with a smaller plant whatever the case is i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments below if you use rocks if you had any issues i doubt you have especially if your volume from soil to water ratio is equivalent to the usage of the plant i doubt you have any issues at all and i want to thank you guys so much for watching i will talk to you guys next time bye